No, I'm not. No, read that. Fuck's sake. Oh, oh dear. <sighs> We're live. Yes. Fuck's sake. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. We're up to. Nothing much. It's been catching some rays, as you may have noticed. All right. I've gone a little bit darker, you know what I'm saying? Nice and sunny out there. Didn't notice. Sunny Manchester. Who's your mate? Have you not met? You met Henningberg. Treble winner. Henningberg. Treble winner. Treble winner, Henningberg. You're right. Have you oh, met Steve? Good, yeah. Yeah. Henning, yeah. thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. He's nice not to be good, just fucking sitting there saying that. Ah, he's very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a pleasure to have you on the channel. And it was nice to meet you as well. I met you earlier on and we've had a good chat. Um, I've got one question for you, which is the question I ask a lot of our guests is, how have you ended up on this podcast? How did you know, Stay? How's this, how's this happened? Uh, it's, it's through a friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, and he's been working with Steve, I think. So, yes. So put you guys together. And you've had a good chin mark, haven't you, for... Oh wow! <laughs> They're about two hours, yeah. I hope you still got some, some, <laughs> something left to say to each other because you've been having a chat for about two hours. I think we've, great. I think we've said all we need to say anyway. Is so that it then? Right? Just okay. Fucking toss it so, off and call it a day. Right? Yeah, that's that's the end of that. Um, uh, loads of people in the chat are very excited. So if you've got any questions for Henningberg or Jay Marty and Stephen Allen, I doubt you've got any for us. Throw, throw them in the conversation. And um, we've already had a couple of people throwing in questions, so we'll get to them in a little while. Um, obviously, want to talk to Henning about. Winning a treble at Manchester United, hell of an achievement. Big achievement. Big achievement. It's not a top achievement. It's almost. No, I want to know, does Henning know? Uh, well, I've heard that he's not the biggest achievement. No, it's not. No. I think it was the 1991, actually. Yeah. United beat by, uh, Barcelona, I think. Cross Barcelona, but yeah. Cross Barcelona, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. See, see, even a treble winner knows. <laughs> knows his place. <laughs> the boys that won in 91... And then us <laughs> rabble, that, that won yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah, Sparky scored two goals. So yeah, there, you go. there, yeah. there you go, you see. Oh, and one of the questions can't that we did have Can't argue with that. Can we link Henningberg to the 1991 Cup Winners' Cup final? Honestly, you want to talk about six degrees of separation, I'll give you one. Play with Mark Hughes. Played it, and you want to tell us a little bit about it, because you, you mentioned it briefly before. You played with him at Blackburn and won the League Cup, was it? Yes, we beat uh, Tottenham in the final. And Mark Hughes is uh, he's not a central midfield player, yeah. but he played central midfield in that game. I remember him going to centre mid. What was, what was that like? What type of a midfielder was he? Was he like getting stuck in? Or? It was very difficult to be a central defender behind him. <laughs> 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 but how many times a day did he mention the 1991 Cup? Yeah, every day. Did he bring the medal in? Did day. he show you the medal and say, every day. Yes, lads, it's, it's, first, first thing he did when he came. <laughs> like, if you work hard, this is what you can achieve. Yeah, one uh, day you can win yeah. and now defunct. <laughs> you're, a, you're a third tier European Cup competition. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of people, um, absolutely chuffed to bits that you're on the channel. Um, what a legend! A few people saying that the cat. Um, Tim Forbes, Henny Berg, one of my favourite boys. I was like Tim. Loads of people just saying Henny Berg. Can't believe Henny Berg's here. Um, I just wanted to ask you a, a little bit about if we can go back to the start, not to be all boring, but coming to Manchester United because. Someone was saying that, or we read somewhere, that Fergie tried to sign you earlier than when you arrived. And then you obviously came a little bit later. Well, tell us a little bit about that, what happened there. Yes, I think United were at a um, pre-season training camp in Norway. In uh, This is a very long time ago, 1988. I was with the Norwegian team. We played them in the friendly. Um, and uh, no, no, it goes even further back. The year before, I played in a youth tournament in... Minneapolis, in the States. Brian King was the chief scout of was the scout of United. Oh. He recommended me to United. So the year after, when United came to Norway to play Valrenga in the preseason friendly, I was with Valrenga. And then uh, Fergie said, uh, "You must play in this game, so I can look at you." But I didn't play; I was on the bench. And then then he said, uh, "You can come over." I trained with them for I don't know two weeks. And days. Uh, at that time, you needed a work permit to be able to work here, to come, and you needed games for the national team. I did not have the full national game stand, so I could not come. But that was the first time. So I stayed there for a week or 10 days. And then uh, the year, or a few years later, I, mean, uh, I went to Blackburn, and then we played against United, and then, then I came to United. What, what was that like for you as a, as a young... Just totally skipping over the fact you won a Premier League United. <laughs> 
Let's talk about that when we part. Um, what was that like for you as a youngster, though, going to United and then being told, because of not because of your footballing ability, but because of paperwork, basically? You can't you can't join them. Was that tough, or was you okay with No, them? I was okay. I yeah. was not good enough anyway at oh, that time. Very, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Yeah. Uh, no, I trained with them, and I trained with the first team maybe once or twice. I trained with the reserves because I think I was 18. Um, but it was better for me to play in the top league in Norway than to be in the reserve team United. So, for me, it was just a, a nice uh, experience. To, to be there a lot of players forget it's all about getting those minutes it's all about getting that experience yeah and there's no point sitting on a bench and just never playing for four years when you can be you know, playing at any level if you're playing the highest level you can play at no matter where it is no matter what the level is is better than not playing you football's crap you got to play open age I think that's what you developed. Did you always want to play for United? Was that an ambition of yours? I know. No, it was too much to have ambition for me. I was yeah. from Norway. I f was a fan of United when I was younger. Yeah. My brother was with Liverpool, so we argue every Saturday. Really? Uh, yeah, I was watching Steve Coppel and Louis McCarty and uh, Gary Bailey and these players playing. Yeah. We were watching every Saturday in Norway. So they were, I was a fan of the team, but you never think that you will play for them. Well, we still hope one day we might get a call up. Never say never, Henning. Yeah, we've not given up. Really really yeah, you out. never know. Things might go out. Yeah. I mean, that. honestly, I've seen some performances this year that <laughs> I'm debating just keeping my boots in the car, you know what I mean? <laughs> just on the off chance. Um, <laughs> obviously, when you get the, you finally get the, the move to, to, to United, what was that like for you? Because I think it was quite a, at the time as well, a big money move for a defender, especially. It, um, was, uh, it was a lot of money, <clears throat> but uh, I don't know. I played in the Premier League for a few years. We won the league with uh, Blackburn. Uh, I came to. No, a, we don't need to go into that. No, um, <laughs> I, I came to a, a better team, better players. The competition for places in the team were much higher. That was more the difficulty for me than than the transfer fee or whatever. But uh, it was a fantastic group, top manager. I had a very good one with Daglish in in Blackburn, but Fergie, of course, he's uh, he was the best. Have you got a Roy Keane story? Because everyone's got a Roy Keane story. Yeah, I'm sure I have, maybe not the one that you like, but uh, for when I was at United, he was top. He was a leader on the pitch, he was a leader of it, he he was maybe one of our best players, and he dragged everybody with him. He was uh, brilliant when I was there. You mentioned earlier upstairs, talking about you found playing Premier League games after you'd adapted at United easy because of how hard training sessions were. I wouldn't say easy. Uh, because uh, my level was not the highest, so I needed to be at my very, very best if for me to play. And that was difficult to be at your top every time you play. Uh, but for sure, the, the training sessions were at a level that was higher than the Premier League, normal Premier League level. So we got into the games, and the game was slower in the matches than it was in the training because of the, the quality of our teammates when we, we played against each other in training. It was class. Yeah. Who was your, I think I might know the answer, but who was your favourite centre back partner to play alongside? If you had to pick one, if you I've can been, tell us one. No, I've been very lucky. I've had so many good ones. Yeah. I think you're going to be surprised. Really? I think so. Do you know the answer to this? <laughs> Is it the one you said earlier? I played mostly with Ronnie Johnson. Yeah. Uh, and we did, we, we complemented each other very well. Um, it was good to play with Pallister, but I didn't play with him so much. Yap yeah. Stam a little bit more. Yap was top. Um, and you have an old Norwegian Rune Bratset who was uh, won the league in Germany with Werder Bremen. I played with him in the national team as well. Top player, one of the best in Europe. But uh, I think I have to go for Ronnie or Jap. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Upstairs, we was talking a lot about uh, Gary Pallister and the qualities. Of, of I mean, when you were saying these names, underrated. and I'm just thinking yourself, Ronnie Johnson, Jap Stam. Three, three seasons, three titles. Jap Stam. I was love watching him as well. Gary Pallister, it is just <laughs> one amazing defender after another, and all good on the ball as well. Good yeah, I you. was not so good on the ball. Uh, you being <laughs> modest there. <laughs> no, no, but uh, Pallister was underrated with the ball. He, yeah. His first touch and his uh, short passes was top. Okay, he couldn't switch it uh, like uh, Kuman could. But um, I don't think it's many that could switch. That's, it that's, like. that's hardly an in insult. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I've got a 75 yard yeah. ping in my locker. One of the greatest passes of all time. <laughs> no luck. <laughs> but uh, he was uh, he was a good, very good with the ball. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned earlier as well, one of your first training sessions, you went and spoke to Sir Alex and said, uh, 
not feeling this defender on the halfway line, Lark Arkett. Yeah. Uh, it was not the first sessions, but uh, of course, for sure, I, I was a little bit uh, into tactics as well. And, and my education as a footballer came from more zonal defense and together working with the back four and playing together a little bit more. And United was uh, high pressing, high dominating and playing more man for man. And it was not into my qualities to do this. It was not the best for me. And I, I asked him, shall we continue with this? And, and of course. Uh, I was told, yes, we, we will do. <laughs> <laughs> so we just have to do it. I like the fact you asked him. <laughs> Very polite. Yeah, should we continue this? And he's like, yeah. Uh, I, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I find it really interesting. You, you talk about United being a high-pressing team. We play on the halfway line. People act like this was only invented three years ago. But this has been a style of play that we've seen for 25, 30 years, isn't it? I think so that the teams that used to win in Liverpool in the old days as well, they they didn't sit back and defend their own box. Uh, I think the game now is much more tactical than it was even when I played 20 years ago. But uh, there is still, uh, football is not, uh, what we are doing now is not something that has never been done before. And uh, with United when I came, the biggest difference from a playing point of view was that there was so much more space behind me. And I have to sprint from the halfway to the to the box to to get the ball before the striker. While when I was at Blackburn over with Norway, we were more a little bit deeper to defend and can read and intercept and play a little bit different. I think that's such a fascinating thing, um, which I'm sure we'll get into when we start talking about the current United. Are we um, going to do that? Do we have to? I mean, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> right. um, but you know, I, that, I think that's a fascinating topic for us to get into. Um, Erin, you obviously got unfortunately injured on the running um, to that um, famous treble winning season. But the unbeaten run started at Christmas, didn't it? And you was a <coughs> massive part of that run all the way through to the end of the season. Uh, it coincided with my best period at United because I did not play every game. I was in and out of the team and I had periods where I was out for a while. Uh, but uh, what I'm most happy with is that I got back into the team early January and I played most of the games until I got injured in the semi-final against Juventus so uh, it was a good time to, to play <laughs> it was a good feeling it was not nice to be one month out and missing all these uh, big games in the end I would not have played all of them but I would have played a few and with the suspensions we had in the Champions League mm. finals uh, it would have been a chance to play there as well but uh, no no I cannot complain uh, I'm really happy with the, with the time and been able to, to play with these players and to have the manager that we had and the coaches that we had, it was something special. What was the um, the, mood, the mood like? and the, Was there a feeling of momentum from that January kind of onwards? Was it after the Liverpool game? Yeah, the Liver for, as a fan, the Liverpool game for me at that time felt like almost like a catalyst, something special going on here, you know, with the late goal, two late goals, and obviously only getting the winner. In the yeah. FA Cup, you thought, okay, summer, something's happening here, which could be. Was the, did everyone special. think that there was something? I know there's. I've seen all the documentaries where the players say they almost refused to talk about the treble or the T word, or. But was there a bit of an inkling that we could probably take anybody on? It it started to to get momentum at that time after the Liverpool game when we scored in the end there because. We What's going on, do my belt? I know. <laughs> He loves hearing about this. No, 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 but no, but seriously, that is when we started. The, yeah. the momentum started to believe, but remember the year before, we finished second to Arsenal. Yep. So it's not like you think we will win the league easily. And we know the games we played, they were all tough games, but we won the, the even games, we won them. We didn't go win in the end, 5-6-0 for games. It was close games all the time, won the league against Tottenham. 2-1 was it in the very end, last game of the season. Yeah, York and, and you had no, the sorry, semi semi final that, semi final in the FA Cup <coughs> with ten men, Ryan Gates running through and scoring yeah. goals. It's not something you do every every day, every week, every year. It's something special, and uh, I I do feel that. Jay's favourite player as well, saving a penalty in that game. Thank you, yes. Stephen. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> in the last minute. <laughs> one thing that I liked about that, those, or what you mentioned it there, was all the games. It wasn't just us or United just dominating get games and just. Like you say, battering teams. Every game felt like you're on the edge of your seat. Oh, mate, the, Back the, and forth. The every Turin single semi final. Game. Yeah, you, Juventus. Um, yeah, but, but it was also a great use of the full squad. Yeah. Everybody was involved. More or less all the players played. 
Do you and feel they, everybody like contributed. Well? Everybody trusted each other. Everybody knew that uh, the one that the manager picked was good enough to play. It's <laughs> That's a hard balance, isn't it? I think Fergie's only strong. got that right that once as well. I mean, you look at it, like you say, you mentioned the final there, Jesper Blomqvist obviously started the final. We didn't have Keane, we didn't have Scholes, we didn't have yourself. Blomqvist was class that season because Giggs was not available. 40, I think he had played 41 games. One Chris that season. People forget that. People say, oh, no, he played. He played a lot of games. That's a full season's worth. Oh, he earned that medal. Yeah. Medals. How did you cope, Henning, with not being in that final? Because the reason I ask is, I've, I remember as well in the parade seeing Roy Keane looking pretty down. And I read his book and he said that, you know, he, he just didn't feel part of it and he felt a little bit down because he missed the final, obviously, through the suspension. Were you okay with it? Were you able to cope as okay as you can be with missing a game of that magnitude? I think I was coping a little bit better because I've been out for three or four weeks already with the injury. So I prepared myself. I was devastated when I got injured, when I knew the, the how injured I was and I knew I would miss these games. I was trying to come back to, to be ready before the end of the season. I could not do. And that, I was really down. But uh, by the time we got to the final, I had time to accept it. He just got suspended and booked just before, so he missed it from a booking, not from an injury that was a little bit longer. So maybe it was easy for me to do. And to be honest, he, he was the captain. He, he would have for sure played, and he played most of the games. And he was the, he was the leader of the team, so maybe he felt it a little bit more than me that was not one of the leaders. Um, there's loads of, loads of questions. I'll get into <clears> some of them. Santa Notch was asking um, in the chat about Toughest opponents was that were Arsenal one of the toughest opponents you faced? I think he put. I've, I've missed the actual question, but it was around that. Uh, the, the way they played, they were difficult to handle with the offensive players, with Perez and Jungberg and Thierry and Rhee and Bergkamp. They are. They had a, a level that not too many teams had. Yeah. Um, but uh, and they play quick with Vieira in midfield. And they were strong team, physical team as well. And and there was all about this big big rivalry at that time. So. They could counterattack that speed with Overmars as well. So it, when he was there, so it was, yeah, one of the difficulty teams. Does that spur you on having a rival like that? Is that anything? Because a lot has been made of it since. And you look at the from '96 to 2004, only United and Arsenal won the league. And now people are talking about Liverpool and City now. But you, I remember those games and the back and forth, and you know, we we won the treble, they won a, a double. Is that is that in your mind at all? Is that something that spurs you on having a rival like that, or is it just a case of no matter who you? facing you're going to try your best you try your best yeah. but of course the games are different and there is an other added level to these games and importancy mainly mentality because uh, with so many games during the season this league is not going to be decided with every game against them yeah but uh, of course the mentality and who is the best and how you go against your biggest rival is important so it's, it's good to have this rivalry and Okay, we had it with Arsenal, but you know, United, Liverpool, United, Leeds. Yeah. Okay. yeah, just a bit. We had a bit of one with Juventus as well at the time, to be honest. We kept drawing them, didn't we? <clears throat> yeah. Where did you watch the final? Was you with Keenan Scholes? I was, yes, I was in the stand, yeah. Tommy Frudock, watching those last three minutes. It was, uh, it was very strange, uh, because the chances that Bayern Munich had to score. Oh, we were shit. No, okay, we, we had to go for it because we were one it down and, 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 we and you have to gamble. Down, yeah. really. We have to gamble and I think that is, is one of the strengths of the manager. He was not afraid to make to gamble or to make risks and to, to have players to, to come on and change the game and Oli and Teddy came on. Teddy scored one, had assist for the second, Oli scored the second and, and that was it. But what I, I remember most from, from that game is that when... We drew to 1-1 one, one. with a few minutes left. United did not sit back. United tried to take advantage of the disappointment from, from Bayern Munich. And I remember Ole getting the, getting the ball on the left in uh, on the left wing. Yeah, he won the corner. Yeah, but he didn't. We would not have won the corner. If he had stood on the ball, time-wasting, getting into extra time, or keeping the ball. Yeah. He went forward, he went trying to attack, tried to dribble, trying to get dribble, got the corner. Got the corner, scored a goal. <laughs> it almost gets forgotten about that, the fact that we <coughs> went for it, because it would have been the, the easier well, my dad missed option. The my dad missed the winner. Just to just keep the ball. Because he like went for a piss. Really? Because he was like, right, extra time. I went for a, I missed the winner because I was rolling around on the floor. <laughs> still celebrating, honestly. <laughs> I was still celebrating Teddy Schenkham's goal. And I remember looking up and thinking, because I had a drink, 
Ollie didn't score, did he? <laughs> like, we, we scored again, and then it's sort of done. I, yeah. I want to know what level of limbs Roy Keane and scores in yourself. Who, who else was with you where you were sat? Uh, I think it was the three of us together there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine. Right. Um, we're going to have a quick ad, and then we'll come back to Enik Burr. So get your questions in for him as well. Ask him anything. Let's have some more questions for a treble winner. Today's podcast is brought to you by Spitch. Spitch is a free fantasy football game that's available to anyone aged 18 or above in the UK and Ireland. Spitch is a great app because it allows you to enter pitches every single week. You don't need to be planning for the entire season. You can do it week by week and win cash prizes each week as well. And it's not just the Premier League. You can enter teams based on the Bundesliga, the Champions League, the Championship and many more leagues as well. There is currently a special offer available. Go into the app just like you can see on the screen and you can win some amazing prizes. Set up your pitch for next weekend's Premier League fixtures and you'll be in with a chance of winning an Apple Watch, Apple AirPods, gift vouchers and many more amazing prizes. You don't need to enter any card details, just click on the link to sign up to the AMP right now. Remember, you do need to be over 18 years old and terms and conditions do apply. After the games. So thanks to Spitch for sponsoring this podcast. Make sure you get your questions in. Hit that like button as well. Someone is asking about your most feared opponent, I think, player. Sorry, here's a Jacob O.C. Who is Henning's most difficult feared opposition player? Do you have a player that you was like, oh, not him again? Um, I always found it difficult to play against players I did not know too much about. Okay. Because uh, Thierry Henry is a very difficult to play against, but you know what he was doing all the time. He was playing inside left, he was running in the channel, and he wanted to get in there. Uh, Robbie Keane was more difficult, <laughs> because he can meet, he can dribble, he can twist, he can turn, he had good movement in the box, you, you didn't know where he was. Uh, Del Piero was also difficult with Juventus, with the dribble and the timing of his runs. I know, I know. Oh, he so, was so good. Yeah. He was and, so uh, good. <coughs> Romario was also very, very difficult to get hold of. When did you play against Romario? We played him with Norway, we beat him 4-2 at home. Really? <laughs> Don't worry about it. As, yeah, as, who? <laughs> they had, Roma they, they had Romario and Ronaldo up front playing as wow. me and Ronnie Johnson. That was good. Though. It's, it's no a good contest. pairing. No contest. <laughs> I say this all the time. You know, Ronnie as well. Ronnie was an unbelievable defender. He, he was one of the most underrated central defenders. If he did not have so many injuries, he would have three times as many games. He was one of the best in Europe. I think, was he rated highly back at home? Yes. Yes. But he can play midfield as well. Yeah. He played Juventus. He was man marking Zidane. Zidane didn't do anything apart from scoring a free kick. But in game, he didn't do anything. Ronnie just took him out of the game. Definitely underrated. I think you, you know we like. I think it was when Roy Keane was doing that thing one day about his best eleven. I think he did something with Vieira or whatever. And he named Ronnie Johnson. People got Ronnie Johnson. Mm -hmm. Really? He's like, yeah, <laughs> he was class. Ronnie was class. Yeah, he was. <coughs> like say, you know, just um, had it all. Um, so, so, so a few questions coming in. Um, <coughs> Simon Doyle says, what did you make of um, Oli's tenure as manager? What did you make of it all? I think he changed a lot. I think he got United closer to, to where they want to be uh, as a football club, as yeah. a team, as how they play and how they come across. And also they got good, better and better results. They finished second. They were in the final of the Europa League. Maybe a little bit disappointed that they could not win it, but Villarreal is not a, a team that uh, never wins. They, they've done this before. Uh, and the margins in these games are so small anyway. They lost on penalties. So if they had won that game, maybe it could have been different. And I think overall, I think he did a good job. Yeah, uh, I've got to agree yeah. with that, really. I enjoyed the thing is with Valle. I enjoyed most of the time that I was managing Manchester United as a fan. I enjoyed that. You know, week in, week out, most weeks, it was enjoyable. We had some well, great results. We played big was, games yeah. and know we were going to have yeah. to go. It, like, we would go good. to the Etihad and you think, we're not just going to try and get a 1-0 loss here. We, we actually might try and win the game. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and it, obviously, the last few months, it all went, you know, it just went wrong. No yeah, mind, but, but I don't think it's uh, fair to remember him for... The last two no, weeks. No, I agree. I think, and uh, I, I do think it's sometimes uh, things build up, and sometimes it's difficult to change things. But uh, I do think what he did in his period here, I think it was good for United, and I think he did many, many good things. I think the way it's gone following him, 
I think immediately when he was um, sacked, probably would have struggled getting a job. But I think as time's gone on, I think more and more club owners be like, get me his number. Yeah, I mean, like you say, <coughs> you, you finish second, uh, third and second in the league. And it's no mean feat when you look at the teams that are in that in that league. You know, I mean, finishing above the likes of Chelsea and Liverpool and other teams as well. Only City, wasn't it? So I do think he deserves a little bit more credit and not just the, the sort of the end game. Uh, Aditi Gutem says, after winning the treble, how did the squad manage to keep away from being complacent? We had uh, Sir Alex Ferguson as a manager. That's the answer, isn't it? <laughs> so it was at United. They are used to winning. They were used to winning, and everybody knew. And Ferguson made sure that everybody knew, and he made sure he had the competition for places in the team. Uh, he added to the team, and his personality made sure that everybody tried their very best all the time. If they did not, it would not be a nice place to be. How did you personally sort of prepare for that 99-2000 season as a European champion, as the treble winner? What was your sort of mentality going into that season? Uh, just to doing the best we could do. Uh, I came back from an injury. Uh, we wanted to win the league again, I think. <coughs> uh, I think United won the league quite a few games before the end. Yeah. Um, Pissed it, I think, the word you're looking for. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, I did not play that much that year. So the year after, I left. But um, I, I did not have a great uh, start to the season myself, personally. I... I was involved in some goals conceded and did not do so well. Uh, but I was in and out of the team. I think I played in the quarterfinals of the Champions League again. But uh, yes, it was uh, an up and down season for me, but the team won easily uh, the league. I mean, you played 37 games in all competitions in that, that season, so... Still, oh, well. still a big chunk. It's not, <laughs> you make it out like you barely played. Yeah. So it's, it's a long time ago. Made the bench ago. once, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I played a little bit. I looked, I looked, looked there and I thought, well, that's doing yourself a bit of a disservice there. Um, well, uh, it, was, it was over 100 appearances in three years. Yeah, that's... Y you've not just tossed it about <laughs> here. Like, you've, you've been a major <laughs> part of everything that's gone on in, in three years. You play 100 games, 30 games a year. More than 30 games a year. Yeah. Yeah, <clears> it was... <throat> yes, but it, it was the first time in my career that I was not playing every game and it was a little bit difficult uh, but at the same time maybe the competition for places was much higher the level was higher um, and uh, but uh, for sure it was uh, looking back a great time I did see another part to his question as well he was asking how what, what how would you sort out United's defence I think he means now what do you think about United's defence now do you think that there is a lot of work to do there is work to do of course um, I think every team that are successful is based on a, a good defence mm. as a team. Mm. And uh, it's not only the back four who are defending when you don't have the ball. And uh, to have the, the understanding of each other, mm. how you want to defend so everybody understands and read and act together. So they have the same understanding of what they need to do. And that you have a defensive way of playing that suits the players that you have is key. And OK, when you make changes during the season, sometimes that is difficult because it takes time to learn. You can understand it theoretically, but to actually learn it and to do it in the split seconds on the pitch, making the right decisions all the time is not so easy. That needs practice and that can take some time. Um, following retirement from playing, um, I think you've had a, a successful and with unsuccessful periods, I think it's safe to say, um, in management yourself. Um, although, it's with the Venkis. I reckon the Blackburn thing has to have a big asterisk next to it. It's the Venkis were there. It was when the Venkis were there. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but you've been successful in Poland. You've been successful in, in Cyprus. You've actually won titles um, managing. Um, not ended so well lately. At, um, Ammonia. Ammonia, that's the one I was looking for. Um, but um, do you want to talk to us a little bit about your journey as a manager following retirement? Yes, um, I moved back to Norway and then I um, do the coaching badges. I was a little bit lucky because I got the chance to do a top league team in Norway, Lynn, a smaller team, academy team, 
with good young players. Uh, I was there for four and a half years, staying in the league and selling players, which was good. Then I went to another Norwegian team, Lillestrøm, which I played for before for three years. They were in a very difficult situation financially. So we needed to sell players, we needed to recruit and develop. So we did not get the best results in the league, but we needed the team or the club to survive. And from being the oldest team to the three years later, the youngest team, it was also, we did well. And then I had Blackburn for, for two months, which was uh, a big, big risk I knew when I took the job. Uh, but having played there for seven and a half years and have the top time as a player, it's difficult to say no when they ask you. So I knew it would be risky, but it didn't work out. There were too many things inside that club that was not how it should be. I think we leave it like that. <laughs> and, uh, what was it you said before <laughs> taking the Blackburn job? Uh, yeah, okay, I, 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 I've been a little bit on TV sometimes as well, and I, I did say a few months before that there is no manager with any integrity would take that job. But uh, <laughs> and then you took the job. Uh, okay, <laughs> it was. Um, I did take the job, but like I said, it was so difficult <coughs> to say no. And I do think I thought I had the time to to make the changes and to get the people in that I wanted from the staff. I did not uh, because they were not available when I took the job. <laughs> Um, and uh, it was a good learning experience, I must say. I don't think I was ready as a coach, head coach or manager at that time to take a job like that either. Uh, my football views, okay, but as a leader, I don't think I had enough experience to take that job. It was too early. Uh, then I went to Lega Warsaw. Uh, we won the league, which they can do, but we did really, really well in Europe. We beat Celtic over two games, but got knocked out because one of the players was not registered. Oh. It was, we beat them 6-1 over two games, unbelievable. Uh, but uh, we won the, our group in Europa League. We lost to Ajax in the last 32, which was a good thing to do. We won the cup in Poland. So the Legia was, was a very good time. And then I had one year in Videoton in Hungary. We finished second, could have won the league on the final day, but uh, did not. Um, and then uh, I had been to Cyprus now for two and a half years. I do think it was one of the best times for me as a coach, head coach. Um, Omonia is, uh, Cyprus is a small island, but um, with the players from all over the world, every team has 15 foreign players and most of them are foreign coaches. I think the league is ranked 14th or 15th in Europe. It's a lot higher than I thought it would be. Though. And uh, <coughs> we finished first. After the, they have not won the league in 10 years, and then we finished first, we won the league the year after. We uh, played in Europe, Europa League, beating Pauk, playing against PSV and Granada, things like that. So it was, uh, was a great experience. And uh, this year in the league, we were not as good as we would like to be. We did not do <coughs> what United do, did after they won the treble. We did not do the right things, but this is football and we have to learn from it. And uh, there are many things that affect, but uh, our league results were not so good. We won the Super Cup, we, we qualified for Conference League, which was good, but uh, we would like to be better in the league. And I honestly think that it's better to leave a job when you've done something good, so I'm not too bad. That's some serious success, though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, you're talking about those results, the, the trophies you've won and the games. Just glossing well. over winning titles. Yeah, and yeah, we'll 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 yeah. first we in 10 years. You'll we'll smack the Celtic around, don't worry yeah. about that. I mean, <coughs> um, there's a question come in uh, from Clayton M. He says, I mean, how has life been after retiring from football? Did you stay around the game or focus on family? I mean, you've obviously stayed around the game. <laughs> you just listed <laughs> sort of 10 years, whatever, of, of well, a bit longer of uh, management. He also says, uh, do you have a, a Sir Alex story that you'd like to share, or that you could share with us? Uh, football has always been the biggest part, a big interest for me. And even when I finished as a player, I could not imagine not being involved in some part. Maybe be a coach, head coach, manager, scout, whatever. Uh, but uh, it's nice to be able to work with something you like really, really well. Uh, so I feel very fortunate in this way. And now I've been a coach for, I don't know, 15 years. Yes. So, uh, Sir Alex's story, uh, there are a few. Uh, sometimes you get the hair dryer. Yeah, I had hair when I went to United. <laughs> and three years later, I did not have any more. <laughs> no, no, but uh, Sir Alex, it, he, was, he was hard. He was strong, 
But at the same time, he gave you confidence. Because when you did well, he could not do, he could do, he would do anything for you. And he would help you and he would support you. He gave you confidence. And um, he, he was the best <coughs> manager I've had. And uh, nobody tried anything in the dressing room there. <laughs> we had some big, big personalities. But everybody knew who was the boss. Do you ever catch yourself saying a phrase or, or saying something Fergie would have said? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's such a long time ago, but I'm sure I will say some things in the sim not in the same way, but uh, with the same meaning and with the same, uh, not the philosophy, but in the same way and with the values that he did. Swearing yes. at someone in Scottish and that. <laughs> I, I only had Scottish managers when I was in England. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Douglas, Sunes, Fergie. So, he, yeah, it's not... A <laughs> yeah. MacLeish, Rangers. Yeah, so... Very similar, um, <laughs> shall we say. Aggressively uh, Scottish. Yeah, I was, about to say, I was thinking carefully what I could say now without offending anyone. Dark uh, is a bit... Um, he was top. Yeah. He came in at half time. He just uh, didn't need to shout. He's calmer, isn't he? he but he just said, <clears throat> why did you do that in that situation when you know that we're supposed to do this? That was him. I don't want, I shouldn't even ask this, but I will. What was it like in 95, winning that title? Even yeah. though it's knocking me sick at it now. No, <laughs> no, it, it was special. Yeah, because it was, you know, uh, as a United fan, it was horrible, but as a player in that team. Unbelievable season, because uh, the year before we finished second. Mm. And uh, then going one more better the year after. Um, with a team that nobody, I think, had won the league before. Right. And uh, United could have won it on the final day if they had beaten West Ham away. Don't remind me. And we were playing at Liverpool at Anfield <laughs> with, with Doug as a manager. Oh. And do you know what the worst thing about that is? You lost, did you lose that game? We lost the game. Because because we all thought, we all thought, <coughs> United fans, Liverpool will roll over. They'll of let course, Blackburn yes, win. Yes, yes. And we'll beat, and, and, and Liverpool, there's the worst way of doing it. Liverpool won. And we couldn't. Ludek McCloskey, I'll never forget that man. No, no one's ever heard about a goalkeeper. Standing game. ovation when he came back to Ebo the year after. Yeah, yeah. I bet. I bet. <laughs> all, all the black men hey, putting feet. Yeah, honestly, it was uh, it was it was tough to say that one. Um, Matt McAllister, uh, sorry, Matt McCaster says, get Henning a game for Paddock next season. Oh, the Paddock. I'm sure Steve's already asked him that. To be honest with you. Um, She's taking training tonight. Um, Ed C asks about the youngsters at United. Um, he says, um, hitting, uh, Higginbottom, sorry, O'Shea, Brown, etc. What were the youngsters like at Old Trafford? Uh, United, were they intimidated by the senior players at all? Can you yeah. remember much about the younger players at United? I remember a few. We had John Curtis, we had Greenwood, Greenwood, Greening? Greening? Greening, Jonathan Greening. Uh, Wilson. Uh, Matt Wilson. Yes, that, yeah. yes. Um, I don't think they were intimidated. Maybe they should have been a little bit more into it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, no, no. If, with the, the class of '92 coming up before, it was you will not have generations like that every year. And uh, they were in the team, and <laughs> you cannot get all the young players in. Uh, so I, I do think that the record United have for bringing young kids through is, is is one of the best. And there is reason for that because there is a culture, there's a history, and there is a belief that if you go through the academy. You can get into the first team. You don't do that in all the clubs. It's true. It's, there is a there's a desire from the fan base to see it happen, which doesn't exist everywhere. People aren't asked at a lot of clubs. Like no. if I said to you, right, okay, before Trent, who was the last Liverpool Academy graduate? Um, I can't even think. I don't know. Steven Gerrard. That's pretty <laughs> much it, isn't it? In terms of internationals, is it Warnock? Yeah, possibly. You know I mean? was on Sky <coughs> next week. But do you know what I mean? Like, and there's no pressure on them to yeah. produce academy players, whereas it is the case at United. Yeah. Um, a few people in the comments. Oh, someone said David Batty had won the league, uh, the league with Leeds. Yes, thank you for reminding us of that. Yeah, as well. Beating United to the league as well. Thanks for that on Monday. I know on Monday. Um, Boo. <laughs> well, when you watch United in a minute, Henning, how do you feel about it? You're still sort of get emotional or still get yeah. sort of annoyed like we do <laughs> a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. You, you follow them more as a fan. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time as a coach, you look at the, the game tactically and mentally and physically and everything just to see what they are doing, how they are doing it, what are the difference, 
who do they play against, how do they play. So there is a little bit more thinking into it, but uh, you get emotional with the results, you get emotional with the performances, and of course you want them to win. Do you think, or how far do you think United are off from where we need to be at the minute? Do you think it is going to take a lot of time to get back to challenging for the top honours? I mean, football is a strange game. Yeah, You can go from far away to close the gap very quickly. And then it can also take many, many years. It's difficult to say. You look at Liverpool winning the league at the counter the year before, and then last year they were too far ahead. No, so too far behind yeah. City. And now, where are they now again? Uh, I do think if you compare United team with with City and with Liverpool, you would think they are a good distance behind. Is it possible to catch up? Is it realistic to catch up? They they need to improve, that is for sure. Yeah, it feels like a long, long, long way off at the moment. But like I said, sometimes it can be a couple of players really transform yeah. everything. You know, A defender or even a goalkeeper might make you attack better. And suddenly you're scoring more goals, and yeah, and they finished <coughs> second. The, was it last year? Season before. Season before. Yeah. Um, Santa Notch again has asked, "Who else at United did you recognise as someone who had the potential to become a coach or a manager? Were the players that you thought he's going to go on and he's going to be a coach or a manager?" No, it's difficult to say, but when, when you are a player, you have some players who are more uh, discussing football, more into it. But at the same time, maybe don't want to be a coach, don't want to be a manager. Um, Gary Neville was always uh, <coughs> into football and discussing and have opinions. Uh, and he's done fantastic as a, on Sky and as a pundit. And he tried to assistant coach with England. And then, OK, with Valencia it's difficult because you get there and you are in the middle of the season. And this is not easy for anybody and not for a forum to come either. So maybe he will have a go again, I don't know. He's, been, uh, he's doing politics in a minute. He's, he's doing, been on... Uh, I don't think he'll do it again. Keir Starmer and, uh, yeah, doing some speeches, but someone who obviously at the time was always showing that sort of sign of things. <coughs> yeah, he, yes, but, OK, Paul Scholes, so football clever, one of the most intelligent football players on the pitch and talking about it as well, so... So he could read the game, he can see the game. Does he want to be a manager? Does he want to, to be there every day working and, and, and working to improve and to develop and to, to make teams better? It's a, it's a different job than being a player, completely different. Um, Paul Madison, who's been a member of the first team, 16 yeah. months, says, two, again, it's sort of two questions. Who are some of your greatest influences on being a manager and coach? And also, would you consider taking any kind of role with United if you were asked? Yeah. Uh, my biggest influence, of course, uh, is Alex Ferguson. I goes without saying, as a leader, uh, to the way he worked, the way he kept everybody going in the same direction, the way he made everybody do their best. And if they didn't, you would know. If you did, you also know. So his man management was the best I have experienced, uh, but also difficult when you are a player because it's not uh, a rosy life. It's not everything is easy. It's high demands. But he was also there to, to help you and to support you and to, to make you the best you can be, as, as a, to guide you as a leader. I think Kenny Daglish, as a, as a football brain, was great. Uh, his football understanding and how he wanted us to play and how we should do things. He, he simplified the game in a very, very nice way. I had some... Drillo Olsen, the Norwegian national team coach, he had the spell with Wimbledon, but did not work out. But with the <coughs> national team, he was top. I learned a lot about how to, to play as a team, offensively and defensively. And, and in Norway, we have maybe the best club coach ever, Nils Arne Egen. Unfortunately, he died uh, earlier this year. God bless him. But he's, uh, he, he, he took Rosenborg to Champions League seven or eight years in a row. He won the league 12, 12 years, I think, total. And uh, the way they played, with the, the, the philosophy, the structure, how they wanted to play, attacking play, is something special. And uh, I think these guys have been the biggest influence. Just, I just remember that <coughs> the Norway team around that time in the sort of early to mid-90s especially. Because they play, played England around, was it the World Cup qualifying for 94, I think? Yes. And England sort of had a bit of a rude awakening. <laughs> so he was on about with Gary Pallister having a shitter. 
go up against was it Flo? Uh, I think that was in um, <coughs> when we played them at home I think uh, I think we beat them there 3-1 or something I'm not sure but I did not play in that game I played at Wembley when we drew 0-0 uh, I came on actually I was not supposed to come on I uh, I was on the bench and the the, the central defender got the elbow from Ian Wright <laughs> <laughs> so he was on the floor sure and, I, and our doctor ran onto the pitch and asked him you know as doctors do what, what is the score? Because you need to check if it was okay. And he said it was 0-0. Zero, zero. But because England has been dominating and had so many chances, the doctor thought England were in the lead. <laughs> so, so he That's said... That's how he's fucking him off. Yeah, he said, he said, he said they took him off. I came on. <coughs> I played well. Who was at the game? Kenny Daglish. Well. Needed the right back. Three weeks later, I was at Blackburn training. Trial. Got the contract. So you never know. If, if the co- if the doctor had bothered to look at the scoreboard, Correct. Correct. <laughs> it might have been a different career trajectory uh, for you. Um, Mickey Brick says, "What did it feel like to clear it off the line against Inter?" Yeah, it was a it was a good feeling. Yeah, yeah. That was the, was that. The, did you remember the chant that the fans were singing? The no, a, the A team chant. No, no. All right. Do you remember that? You don't need, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, da, 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 Henning, you know, remember? <laughs> right, okay, that was the that was the 18th. Something happened in Jay's car and no, all home anyway. It definitely happened. It Get definitely involved in the chat, <laughs> chat if anyone remembers that. Henning doesn't, but I'm sure I do. <laughs> Unless it was just me on my own singing that one. I think it was. Okay. I think you're on your own. Right, okay. Did, um, well, at least I got it to you today anyway. Were you playing against R9 in that game? Against who? Original Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Yes. <laughs> How hard did you play against? <clears throat> no, no, he was pretty he good. Was, him, he was a good player. Maybe it was not his best time, but he was still very, very good and okay. He likes to dribble, but in, I, I've seen him better with the speed and the power that he had maybe a year or two earlier. But uh, okay, experienced and a very, very good player. A couple of people asked about that Brazil game, the 4-2 game. Mm. Just, I know you mentioned it earlier briefly, but what was that like to, to play against that team? Because you just mentioned there some of the, the greatest players of all time. Like, well, was the center half from Mario Ronaldo? I mean, you know, no, no. Paul Knight throwing up. World Cup winners and <coughs> just phenomenons and two of the best players I've ever seen anyway. Brazil, they won the World Cup in 94. Mm. And this was three years later. We played them at home. They have not lost a game ever since. <laughs> and then we played them friendly before the World Cup the year after. So uh, our coach also said, okay, the first 10 minutes, high pressure. And we were playing as Ronaldo and Romario. <laughs> and we were going like, you sure? <laughs> Is it you, you and Ronnie? Yeah. So at the halfway line, 10 minutes against the Brazil at home, uh, it did it Could got absolutely shredded and against But uh, we had the uh, Tor Andre Flo at f- <coughs> up front, I think he scored one or two. Egil Ossenstar, who played for Southampton, scored one. So we, 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 had a good, we had a good team. And... Uh, it was Flonaldo after the game. Not nice. <laughs> <laughs> what, when you're watching, um, obviously you're watching a lot of football, but in terms of sort of players now, who are the players that you admire, the players that you look at and you go, that's someone either I wouldn't like to play against or I'd like to play alongside is the players that sort of stand out. It could be United or anywhere else really. Just, just to get your opinion on it. Top players? Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult. There are many good players. Uh, you see, my our Norwegian guy, Harlem. Yeah. He knows where the net is, doesn't he? No, but y- you see his age. You see how many goals he scored. You see how he scores his goals, and you see his mentality on the pitch. Left foot, right foot headers, speed, power, t- good timing of runs, good finishing. Reading is, is, is not normal. He's not normal. <laughs> I'm, I'm scared because it, there's rumours, there's always rumours in report that maybe he's going to end up at City and it's just like him in that team. Yeah, City are doing well because they... Could score a couple of goals from... They, could, they, yeah, they don't have a striker, City. So yeah. how will they be with a striker? That's, that's the Especially track. someone that's that style of striker. I think he thrives on pacing behind... I yeah. don't know if City are going to give him that pace in behind because everyone sits need. two back against him. He, can, he will kill you with space in behind, but you don't need it because well, his, movement in, his movement in the box I'm is exceptional. For for, a, for a, such a young guy <laughs> to make the movement that he does, is, uh, the power that he has, is not normal. The only thing that can stop him is injuries. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
he's missed a few games this season, hasn't he? But it's not like he's season injury prone or anything like that. He's missed a one or two. But yeah. How many is firmware updated? <laughs> Just, I don't know. Yeah, him going at City doing all right, aren't he? Without him, but Fuck's sake. I'm throwing him into the mix. See, I'm thinking. It does look like that's going to happen. I just when is, like, is it going to work when he's lacking space in a box? And he's like, yeah, be fine. Fuck. Because <laughs> he could be. <laughs> it was the only hope I had. It looked like we were going to get him at one point, didn't it, <clears> when he went from. Uh, all they had him in Mulder. Yeah. He took him from a young team. Yeah. They had a small team, I mean, when he was very young. And he gradually. Gave him, he had, he did really well with him, because if you put him in play all the time, you will kill him. But he, he made a, a step up. He did the same with Mason. Yeah, he, he, did, he, really he did really well. Brought them into the team. But then he went well. to <coughs> Red Bull Salzburg, which was the correct club for him to go, a team that is dominating, the best in the league, but they're not in the top five league in Europe. Yeah, and he just scored so many goals. And then to Dortmund, a team that was crying out for a number nine. We had everything else, but not the number nine, and scored so many goals still. So where he will go in the summer, we don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, <coughs> it won't be United, will it? We missed our chance there. I think maybe we could have got him a few years ago. Those no, rumours were in the book. I don't know. He didn't, it, didn't, it didn't happen. Like you say, he went to Dortmund, and now um, he's going to be massively in demand. Um, I just wanted to, to ask you about... Obviously, you know, you, you spoke about all the great players you played alongside and great managers you've 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 um sort of worked under and everything. In terms of like your philosophy when it comes to your coaching, your sort of management, is, you, is there a certain way that you like to to, to play? Is there a certain style you have or is it just win win <laughs> matches, basically? No, if you if you don't know how you want to play, you will not win matches. Yeah. And okay, some play defense and transition, and some play dominating games, and some play possession games, and some are more direct. I think our teams has been more direct and possession based, not <coughs> back to front, but uh, to play through the lines and to play as quick as we can, to take advantage of the spaces when they are there, or to to develop and to create the spaces to to open teams up. But when you have a team that is top four and want to win the league, you are playing more dominating games and defensive transitions. Uh, then you are if you have a team that's going to stay in the league. If you've got a team that stay in the league, you are more defense and protect and then play the quick transition. So uh, if you are in a, have a team that is in the middle, you have to do both. Yeah. It's li sometimes a little bit more difficult. But <coughs> throughout the game, if in a normal league, when you have even games, even teams, you have to do all these things during the 90 minutes anyway. It just depends on what is your speciality, what is the best. But our teams have been more direct, playing quickly through the lines. Defensively, we can press high, we can defend high when we have to against smaller teams. If we play really good teams or when we play in Europe, when you play PSV in Europe with Ammonia, you cannot press high. Uh -huh. You have to defend deep, you have to play on the transitions. Uh, we played Olympiacos in the Champions League playoffs to get to Champions League. We lost 2-0 away, 0-0 at home. And we had to go for it, so we had to press more. But okay, against that team, you gamble a lot more, <coughs> and that is not easy. But uh, yes, we we are more zonal defense and more. But what I do believe most in is that everybody has a clear understanding on how they should play, and that you can get specialized people with special quality in different position that can make sure that uh, the team is much better than the 11 individual players. And uh, if you have the same understanding, then you are always one step ahead of the opposition. And you can play quicker and you can play better. But uh, if you don't have good players, it's not going to be possible. What's the better feeling for you? Is, a, is it winning as a manager or as a player? Is there a, There's is not many that have done both, is yeah, there? You've won titles as a manager <laughs> and you've won titles as a player. Which yeah, but when you are a player, you are younger. Yeah. Everything is new. You are on the pitch yourself. You, you work hard. You are on the pitch doing it, so it's difficult to beat that. Uh, but when you are a manager or a head coach, you have the responsibility for everything. You are more inside of the, the planning and the training and the development and the recruitment with everything. So I don't know what is best or worst. This is, is, is a fantastic feeling when you win. Um, Arvid Moen, who's been a member <coughs> of the first team for 16 months, says, Jay, ask Henning, if Norway could have won the 1998 World Cup if they had met teams yeah. other than Italy? Yes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> for those of us who don't know, and I include myself in this conversation, if I'm being brutally honest, um, what is that just a case of... 
No, we, we honestly KDP. believed that uh, we had the possibility to go all the way. Yeah. Uh, Sweden took bronze in 94. Mm-hmm. We played in 94 as well, but not so good. We, uh, but playing Italy in the last 16, I think it was, was not the best team to play them. Uh, we beat Brazil in the group stage, so if you can beat Brazil, they played in the final. They lost to France in the final. Yeah. So, of course, it was possible. We had a very good team. Ronnie was there, Stig and Gibbonby from Liverpool. We had uh, Rektal in midfield, Miklan, and we had uh, Tor Andre Flo, we had Egelos and stuff. We had uh, pff, many good players, many, many good players. And uh, of course, we had the chance to, to do better than what we did. And, but OK, you beat Brazil in the, in the group stages to go through from the group in the World Cup is not bad for, <laughs> for Norway. <laughs> uh, but uh, Italy was not our favorite team to meet. We, we played them in the World Cup 94. We lost. Uh, we ended the group in '94 on the same amount of points as Italy, on the same amount of goal difference. They had scored one more and conceded one more. That's why they went through the group and we did not. Italy played the final because of the goal scoring. The goal scored. <sighs> that was difficult to take. Margin. Yeah, such fine margins. Such a good team, as you said. Uh, Matt McCaster says, Henning's thoughts on 1991. We've already asked that. We covered that straight away. That was early doors. Come on, Henning said that, you know. Give us some credit. Yeah, come on. That was the that was uh, one of the, the, the first first questions. Um, oh, just a few emojis. Loads of people are sort of complimenting, saying they miss you, they miss Ronnie as well. Uh, at United, I think we can all uh, agree with that. It must have been a bit strange as well to play alongside someone. So many different sort of, well, for club and for countries um, playing at, Ma- at Manchester United what was that like because I suppose I presume you didn't expect that to happen and then you end up playing alongside someone both at Manchester United and, and for your country uh, yes um, I we were good friends with Ronnie off the pitch as well so it did help uh, we spent a lot of time together Ronnie is a, he's a, he's a, he's, he's a quiet guy but one of the most competitive guys anything if it's a competition yeah he will do everything, anything to win. And right. most of the times he will win. He's, he's, he's an unbelievable guy, but a uh, nice lad and uh, honest guy. And I think he's in coaching now in Norway in the second, third division. He just started after being with an academy for a while now. So it's, uh, it's good that he's back with the, on the football again. But uh, yeah, when you play together for so many times, you start to know each other better. And I think uh, uh, Sir Alex saw us <coughs> when we played for Norway together. And uh, maybe he thought, because Ronnie came to United before me, and then maybe he thought we can play well together at United as well. But Palace was always number one choice. Yeah, was always the number one choice. And then Ronnie sometimes played midfield, or I played, or Ronnie played. And Ronnie was a lot injured. <coughs> <coughs> kind of did all right, though, didn't you? <laughs> didn't they? Did all right for us. <laughs> I mean, second by a ball air. A treble and then winning it at a canter. Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. Not a bad three-year period. N- not really. <laughs> it was good. I mean, yeah. it's, it's literally just. <laughs> it was good. That's one way of putting it. Yeah. <clears throat> Yap's three years at United is just you know, three back-to-back <clears throat> titles. It just was only a second away from being that that same level. Unreal. Yes, but I was not uh, one of the main players and leaders in the team. Still played hundred games. I'm not I know, I know. Yeah, and look, when you mention all those all those defenders that we had at the time. You know, it didn't matter if it, it was That's you it. or Ronnie or Yap Stam or, you know, I know it was a little bit earlier when it was Gary Pallister, that was just, you know, it's just elite defenders, isn't it? <laughs> no matter who you rotate rotating with, and I think that's part of the reason, as you mentioned earlier, the success that we had, because it's such a strong squad. <coughs> strong squad, and and you imagine the midfield we had in front of us. David Beckham, Paul Scholes, Roy Keane, Ryan Kicks. It's not the worst... Uh, N- no, it's not, in front not, of you. not too shabby, it's is it? Right, it's alright. Right. Yeah, right. not, not, not bad that at all, is it? <laughs> it makes me sad though, Steve, when we talk to <laughs> people like Henning and we go over all these teams and the, the success and the, you know, how gutted we were when we lost the league by a point and, you know, we only won the, 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 t- the title that Fuming. season. Not, yeah, Fuming that we only won Fuming. the title that, that season. Fucking we not win the league. Yeah, like, we've, we've not won the Champions League and it's not that great a season and now it's like... It's there were seasons the that we won a league and didn't go to a parade <laughs> because we'd only won the league. I'm just just say that in your head out I loud. Know, it's true. Like the other nineteenth title win, no one really give a fuck. Twentieth, everyone celebrated a little bit, didn't they? We, yeah. we, we got clear of Liverpool, but mm. like nineteenth title, about fucking twelve people turned up. Like, yeah, <laughs> nice one, you dicks. 
Um, Thomas Wood says, Henning comes across very humble. You do come across as very humble, Henning. He seems to be so, sort of... Oh, matter of fact, I can, see, it, about I can it. see a serious edge. I can see someone dropping a bollock in training. No, I'm, I'm not disputing that. I mean, about the, the achievements, I think. More, yeah, there's, more than... there's an absolute death stare in there, I reckon. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what's next for you, Henning? What's... Um, yeah. I don't know. In this game, you, you don't know. It's difficult to plan the future, long term. But uh, I like to be a coach, head coach. Uh, I've been there for 15 years now. I'm sure I have opportunities to, to continue. So, But at the same time now, to be honest, I'm enjoying some extra time with my family and my kids, which is nice because uh, when you work away from home, is you don't spend as much time with your family as you normally would like to do. But now, soon, the kids are old enough to, to do whatever they like, yeah. so it's easier. But uh, no, uh, it's not bad to have a, a few months off and then be ready to go again, and uh, we will see. You doing any um, extra training, coaching, any courses in the meantime before you get back in the mix? <clears throat> um, I will travel and uh, <laughs> see some clubs and discuss with some how they do, how they train. What, what they are thinking and to discuss some football. I will do a little bit on the TV as well and watch some games and analyze some games, which is good. So when you are working with a club, you don't have time to go into depth and you cannot travel to see people. So I will do that. See, that's the awesome thing about being a travel winner, isn't it? You just phone up a club and be like, hey, can I come watch training, observe what you're doing? And don't go, fuck off, you weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, yes, I don't Come on, of course you can. <laughs> Got any tips? <laughs> Henny, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you, and hopefully we'll see you again. If not, put you off, you can come back on again. Uh, I'm not sure. Well, okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's very honest. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks to everyone who got involved as well. We've got some great questions that came in there. Appreciate that. Uh, make sure you are liking and subscribing to the channel. What are you up to this weekend? Um, final home game of the season tomorrow. Penultimate game of the season. Um, we fucked it up, Jay. Go on. So we're probably on. just going to finish third now. But um, we'll finish with two wins. And um, hopefully we'll be in a new spot next year. Can't say where just yet, but okay. applications are in. Applications are in and we'll see what happens if we get accepted. Right, so make sure you're checking out Steve. You can find out what's going on there. Uh, big thanks again to Henning Berg and thanks to everyone who's got involved. This has been The Thank Brew. You. Thanks for watching. Thank you.